Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to adjust that glitter girl's kitchen. And first thing we're gonna do is the bar. The easiest way I found to kind of save the countertop was to go around it with some masking tape or painter's tape if you have it. And then um, lay it down flat after you go around the perimeter. I always start with the bottom of things. And yes, you do need to repaint the bottom and under it because if you set it on a kind of glossy or white surface, it will cast blue if you have not painted it. So this is it painted. It looks kind of splotchy. I think something was wrong with the paint or me. And now I'm just going to paint the kitchen part. I took off all the doors and I'm not going to try to save the glass. Remember to hit under the canopy so it's not going to cast blue over everything. And I painted everything white on the kitchen, covering the stove, even though I ended up painting most of that as well. The doors got painted all white. I did get some cracking there, so it was a very rough start to say the least. I went with the second wood contact paper, and this is what that looks like. I thought it came out really good, but it wasn't the final uh, result. So keep watching the video for the final result because I changed everything basically. While I was waiting for more white paint to come, I decided to go on ahead and paint the camera. And at first I have this color place paint and it was taking forever to dry. It was just staying really sticky. I had to actually go over it with another Rust-Oleum paint, I think, so it could go ahead and dry. While I was still waiting on paint, I decided to film a tutorial. It's in vertical because I wanted to do it as a, as a reel or a short. And so what you do is you just cut out brands from the sales paper and you take your little baggies and your glue sticks. And these little pliers, if you want to, though, this step is optional. You'll need scotch tape and some foam. And these are the paints that I use for the food. I know other YouTubers do hot glue food, but I don't really watch those videos. So what I do is I just flatten some hot glue very carefully because it is hot between wax paper. And then you end up with this kind of flat surface that you can just brush on some color. You can do it with your fingers like I do or a brush. Then I take for instance, my cheese, and then I glue that onto a baggie, cut off the top for a more realistic look. And then after the paint's dry, which is really quick, I start cutting little strips. And the little strips actually end up looking like french fries, so you could also make french fries like this. But I kind of like how the glue is still kind of translucent because it gives it that cheese look. And so once I have the strips done, I'll cut those again. Once all my cheese is all cut, then I'll just put it into this little baggie. And this is how the end result looks. So I hope this was helpful. Ignore the paint on my fingers. There's going to be a lot of that in this video. So next, I'm going to do a package of chicken. And I try to make the foam yellow, but it was just soaking up the paint. So you can skip that step or just use yellow foam. Again, I put it in to the Ziploc baggie and I cut the Ziploc baggie down. And then I take glue, hot glue. Be very careful. And then I squeeze it with these things to kind of seal the bag. And then I trim that down. So for the red berried pizza, I use three pieces of foam just to give it a varying height. And then after that, I wrap it in some tape. So for the bacon, I just use tape from the start. So if you don't have the little Ziploc baggies, you can just use the scotch tape. So what I do is I kind of seal the bacon in there and it's only on one piece of foam, so it's very thin. And then as you can see, like I'm pressing around the edges 
and then I'm cutting a little bit away from the edges for the finished result. So this has to be my favorite one. I'm just going to make some tortilla chips, have the fiesta size, whatever. <laughs> and this is how you cut like little triangles from the glue. And as you could have seen, like the bag itself from the sales paper was not big enough. So that's why I'm just using them as labels for things. So that's just a little hack for you. So once you have a good amount of chips, you can go ahead and fill your bag up. And look at that. It just looks so realistic. That was probably my favorite one. I lied. The tortillas. These are my favorite one. So I just like made this look like tortillas with uh, the paint and really like if you just pat your finger and paint kind of dry brush it on, um, you'll get that look. So I cut out the little bits from the packaging. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but I hope you can tell what I did. And then I glued that, the red top of it and then the mission label onto a tortilla and then i put it in a bag and just wrapped it and found a zip tie not a zip tie but like a a bread tie from in the kitchen i took a piece of that and just put it on there like this so it actually does look like the package this hack is a little trickier because it doesn't fit and you can print one out that fits but the whole point is that you don't need a printer for this project because everything is supplied for you and so you can paint this side or if you have to put one on one side and one on the other. So for the kind of aerial shots of the cutting boards, you can just cut those out and place them on actual cutting boards and pretend like your dolls are cutting the meat. It looks really neat. So now I'm going to show you how to make bacon. You'll take a really, really flat piece of the hot glue. I forgot the word. You kind of just dry brush that Tuscan or brick red if you have it over the hot glue and it looks better if your hot glue came out textured somehow and so then you'll take a little bit of white and do the same thing in some spots that way it looks like the fatty parts of the bacon I know it looks kind of gross because it looks like bloody meat you know but it's, it is raw meat so so then you just are going to cut strips. And these are my two strips. Now let me show you how to do the charcuterie board, I think you could say, or a fancy lunchable as some people come to know them as. Just got these from Hobby Lobby, a pack of them, and you'll do cheese and you'll glue your bacon on that. And then I have these little balls for some reason. I roll around in green and then just touch up any missed spots after you glue those onto the board. So now you have some grapes. And then glue your triangles of cheese on there as well. And now you have your charcuterie board. And I might have these on Etsy later as well. So if you want to purchase one, just be looking out on my Etsy. So back to this project, I found one that I had already made and I, I did this one with a printable. Now I just go in with the silver. It's kind of hard with the pen, but you get the idea. So sometimes last year or so I made Target bags, <laughs> but today I'm just going to make my own Doll Mart bags. Oh, look at this is where the project goes completely sideways. As you can see, I'm not really happy with the white so i'm trying to change it and was going to go rectangle by rectangle but i scratched that and i just made the whole thing in the swiss coffee and yeah i ended up doing the whole kitchen off camera hi guys editing me i'm outside so i hope the wind noise isn't too bad i really hate cheating you out of a tutorial video so i'm going to try to share as many details about the kitchen as i can starting with the paint these three folk art paints i did get from hobby lobby you don't need to spend extra money on paints. I'm sure the craft apple barrel, craft barrel or whatever from Walmart will do just fine. But these are the ones I just happen to have. I use, I use these two for my stroller tutorial. So you might be familiar with these. One is called cinnamon and the other one is called wrought iron. But this one I use for the refrigerator. 
and it is called Italian Sage. It's a really pretty green, by the way. Um, they are all matte finish, which kind of links to the roughness of my kitchen. <laughs> and in the video, I mentioned that I don't like how rough everything is. So whatever color you're painting your refrigerator, I would suggest to get a gloss finish. Now, I just have this basic white. It is called Apple, Apple Barrel from Walmart. So um, I have the just a white. <laughs> and I mix that with this color to get the gray tones because i think there's like a hint of green in this black it's like a charcoal there's a hint of green in there and so i knew i was going green with the refrigerator not initially but <laughs> when i when i saw that i was going green with the refrigerator i chose the uh, charcoal with the hint of green in it instead of the one with the hint of blue. So if you get pavement in this brand from Walmart, that one is going to be like a bluish charcoal black, and then this one's going to be green. So I thought that it would complement this very well. So I get a few tones of gray by mixing white and this color together. The other color I had was this folk art color. I actually think I got it from Walmart. So I don't know if they sell the same brand, but whatever. And it's actually like just a metallic finish. It's like a very, very, very strong metallic. <laughs> and so this is what I painted the hardware with. I'm, I'm sure any metallic might do, but this is what I used. So for the white on the backsplash, I used the sample paint. And it's what I had lying around, but it is by Bear, and it is called Swiss Coffee, and it's in satin, if you're wondering. So the Swiss Coffee is like a very, very beautiful white, and it's kind of a warm white. So I think the initial white that I was painting it with was a little bit too cool. It was still a little bit too stark white, and it was just throwing everything off. It was not the vibe. So this white worked out so much better. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I don't know if I'm going to put this clip at the front of the video or at the back, but I just wanted to show you the kitchen. Unfortunately, I don't have all the footage of me making it over because it was a bit touch and go and I had to do an emergency surgery. It was on life support. I didn't know if the kitchen was going to make it just because how I initially thought it was going to be, it wasn't turning out that way. And I was just not liking it. And so, you know, I just have to, I just had to come off camera and like kind of redo it and let things kind of flow for a bit. And so, you know, we're going to get a tour instead of a tutorial. So. So the overall theme I wanted to go with was mid-century modern. So, you know, it's a very popular style. I like it. And Barbie was made in 1959. And so her initial style was mid-century. And so that really inspired some of the choices, the color choices. So I just used the same brown for the cabinets as I did the stroller. I don't know if you guys have watched that video, but... I went with brown up here and then brown on the shelving and then brown on the cabinets and brown on the bar. <laughs> and then I did a mix of gray. Well, I mixed white and black and I got this gray color for the stove. And then I had this awesome green color for the refrigerator which is very mid-century to do a colored refrigerator. The reason why I took the brown also to the canopy at the top was to balance things out. Keeping it white just kind of looked a little bit odd. And usually there are cabinets at the top. There are no cabinets here, but I thought visually it would be the same thing as having cabinets at the top if I would just paint the canopy the same color brown. And 
it seemed just natural that I would paint the shelving the same brown as well. On the shelving on the bottom, I did paint the bar part of it gold, as well as the hardware on the sink and the hardware on the cabinets, the stove, and the refrigerator. I was worried that it was a little too much gold going on, but I thought it would be a nice touch for pictures. And what tied in the gold with the countertops was I did a mix of dark gray, light gray, and white on the countertops to make the stony type of finish, which you can achieve with a sponge, even though I did it with my fingers, <laughs> my fingertips. Um, and then I went in with the same gold paint on the counters and around the sink. <laughs> and do you see where the appliances are, the coffee maker, the eggs, and the milk? I want to go ahead and make that um, extension of the cabinet and just have the stove here. I didn't have access to a printer yesterday. And so I just used a printable from a different project and it didn't really cover the entire stove. However, I kind of like having the additional counter space behind. I think it still looks nice. And so I do want to do the same faux stone finish on the back of the counter right there as well. Up here, I just have some canisters. Ignore this spot. I had tried to glue something down and it didn't work and it left glue right there. So when I say like the struggle was so real in this kitchen, it was real touch and go. I have some greenery. I have a canister of little wooden spoons and such, some plates, some decor, and then the cups are on the, what is this called? The refrigerator. So overall, I really like the kitchen. The only thing is I don't like how rough everything looks. Would have liked it to be smoother, but it's okay. I'm actually okay with the texture of the backsplash because it looks like brick rather than tile, and I'm okay with that. But everything else looks kind of rough, and like I need to go and repaint the sink. I was just getting tired yesterday, and so I didn't go in with like a second coat on the sink, like inside of it. And I also lost my metallic silver paint and I can't really find it in stores either. So, <laughs> but I really do wanna go in with the metallic silver paint on the inside, but I will settle for gray. I did make these towels from kitchen towels. Or, yeah, they were from Kitchen Towels. So I just made some smaller ones. I'm going to have some on my Etsy. Link is below. I'll have them up later on. And, oh, let's talk about the floor. This is the countertop, the island countertop in my kitchen, my real-life kitchen. And I think it just looks so nice against everything. This is my kitchen, by the way. So, um... You can see like on the back wall. So there and there are um, kind of the colors repeated <laughs> that I use in the kitchen. So that was done on accident. But yeah, this is what I wanna say about this little kitchen, which I reviewed and unboxed in a previous video. Go watch that video. I'll try to have it linked below, but sometimes I forget these things. But this is a Glitter Girls Kitchen. And when I posted that video, it was $11, $12 maybe. So it's a very, very good buy. It's, it's well worth it. And this is what I will say about it. It's like so big that it can actually stand on its own. You don't actually need to make a diorama. The kitchen bar and whatever, I guess the kitchen stand thing can stand on their own. And as you can see, you still get pretty nice setting from this. So you don't necessarily need to make a diorama to house this kitchen. You could just set it up like this. I even have like table and chairs over here to show you how it can also be like a cafe or a restaurant, probably a cafe though. 
But yeah, I thought that was very cool and it's easier to store if it's not housed in a diorama. So one last thing I wanted to show you first was the kitchen without the bar. So you can see the inside of everything is white because I initially painted everything white, except the drawers. Those are still blue on the inside. I'm not too worried though. So I want to show you how that looks. And again, I wish everything was smoother. And even if you don't have gold, I would say probably I would take out some of the gold because it does seem a little bit overkill on gold. <laughs> Um, but let me just show you the camera. So I repainted the camera and basically I painted everything all black and it was pink. If you don't know, some type of, you know, super kitty color. And I repainted on with a, what's it called? A paint marker that's metallic the kind of silver rim they already had on there. And then I added, I painted these silver too with the same metallic marker, the little dots that were on there already, just to give it some extra. And it does open like this. And this comes with the kitchen, the camera. So if you didn't know and you didn't watch that other video, the camera comes with the kitchen. So you get the bar, you get the kitchen itself with a lot of great things in it. And um, it's, a, it's a very good scale for Barbies and you get the camera. So those pieces alone, the bar, the kitchen, and the camera for the price it was around $12, it's a very, very good deal. Um, I didn't keep everything from the set because I like realistic decor. So a lot of the realistic decor I made, um, the cups I got from Amazon, the plates I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, but this gold coffee maker or espresso machine was from a Barbie Chelsea set and I painted it gold, but the eggs and the milk are from the kitchen set and they look so good. <laughs> I just love how they look like the eggs look oversized in person, but they translate super well to camera, which is the important part. And they come with a carton, but it's blue or teal or something. So I should have painted the carton as well while I was at it yesterday, but it kind of slipped my mind. But I put three of them in the clear bowl that also comes with the kitchen set. So I was able to keep a few good things that I didn't have to repaint or anything. So I really like that. So that's actually gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. I'm gonna try to unbox and review the plane since I didn't, well, since I worked on the kitchen this weekend, I'm not gonna do the remodel of the plane in this video. I'm just gonna review it. And then I'll have a separate video for the remodel just like I did. Um, so for the RV, I unboxed, reviewed, and did the makeover for the RV all in the same video, but I'm gonna break it up because it's a lot for one day. So yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the photos. Follow me on Instagram at adult.collector. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.